Here's an example of plotting a slope field by hand. Here's the differential equation we've got. x is the independent variable, y is the dependent variable, and y prime, or dy dx, is equal to minus one-half xy. Oop, I forgot to put the minus in here. Okay. And this is uh, not the, the absolute simplest kind of example. The simplest kinds of examples are two. One is where the y wouldn't be there when y prime is just a function of x. That's antiderivatives. And the nice thing about those kinds of slope fields is that once I've got the slope element at a particular value of x and y, I can copy and paste for different y's because this doesn't depend on the y value. Those are nice and simple. The other similarly simple example, although they have a different bit of a different feel, is things where the, y, the x isn't present. It's called an autonomous differential equation where the independent variable isn't explicitly present. There, if I've got a particular slope element, then I can copy left and right. So in each of those, you only have to do either the x-axis only for these examples, or the y-axis for these examples where the, only the y appears, and then you just copy either up and down or left and right. I'm doing one that's a little more complicated where you can't do either of those. Okay, so now one of the things about, nice about this equation, though, is that if x equals 0, this expression gives you 0 no matter what y is. And so this is going to be 0. And the same is true if y is 0, these are all 0. What does that mean? Remember what these numbers are supposed to mean. They're supposed to be values for y prime. Those are slopes, and so I put them in as little slope elements. And so I've already got a bunch of slopes. OK, now what about if x equals 1 and y is various different values? OK, I'm just going to plug these in real quick. x is 1. Minus 2 times minus 1 half is 1, and that's 1 half, that's 0, which I already knew. That's minus 1 half minus 1. Now I'm just going to put those in. These are all along this line, and here it's going to be slope 1, slope 1 half, slope 0, slope minus 1 half, slope minus 1. I'm just really, ew, that's a little bit steep. I'm just kind of really eyeballing. Slope 1 we know is a 45 degree angle, and then I'm just kind of eyeballing the rest roughly. If x is minus 1, I get minus times minus times minus. That's going to be plus, but otherwise um, it's going to be minus. Otherwise, it's the same. And so these signs just flip. And so I get the same things, but here going downhill, and then uphill gently. So no, what you know? For example, this one. This is x equals minus one, y equals two. So I'm just looking at this entry. I look at what the slope is, that's what the right-hand side is telling me, it's telling me the slope, and I put that little Elma slope in there. Similarly, if these are twos or minus twos, two, 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 minus twos, then what's going to happen, these guys are just going to get doubled. These guys are still going to be the minus from the equation times minus is plus, and that's going to be 2, 2 and a half, that's 2. And that's going to be 1, 0, 1, 2. You can pause and do that calculation for yourself if you want, but I don't want to bore people. And I already knew the 2, 0, 1. Now, where are these? This is where x is 2 and y is various values. OK, so starting at minus 2, I get steep slope, then 45 degree angle, then down 45 degree angle, and then steep. And then here is just the negatives of what I got before. Oh, I'm sorry, these were negatives. My bad, these were negatives. 2 times 2 times minus a half is minus 2. Just rushing, my bad. Now these are the negatives. So now at this bottom corner, I'm getting very st steep downhill, then slope 45, 45 degree downhill, 45 degrees uphill, and steep uphill. OK, so there's our um, slope field. What do we do with it? Why are we interested in it? Because it allows us to roughly figure out what the the equations, what the solution looks like. If I start at this initial condition, the idea is to, s to follow this slope field approximately until I get near another one and then change my direction. And try to sort of anticipate in advance, or else you get something with sharp corners, which isn't accurate. So I start going out here, and I start looking ahead. Hey, it's going to be going down, and then going down. But then it's not going to keep going down, because it's going to get to this region where on the axis where it's really flat, and so it's going to level off. Back here, if I extrapolate backwards, Oh yeah, okay, it's gonna go here. Ooh, I'm just looking ahead to this guy. Oh, that's getting steeper. Getting steep. Oh wait, actually now it's not so it's so steep and it's gonna level off again. Similarly down here, following the curves. 
It's better if you have more slope elements, but of course that's more work to do the more slope elements. And I look, I get these humps, plus or minus humps. One really important thing is I know an equilibrium solution. Here, I shouldn't put it in. Don't put it in blue, the other, only other color I have. Here's an equilibrium solution where all these things, when, uh, when uh, y is 0, I always get 0, no matter what the x is. That means I have this straight line solution across here. One of the really nice things about solution curves to differential equations, except with rare exceptions that we'll never deal with, is they can never cross. That's one reason I knew that this guy coming down, it can't possibly go down here because it can't cross this solution curve. If you've played with graphers at all with solution curves, you've, you've seen that phenomenon. In fact, let's compare this to what D field does. This is the computer's version. It plotted many, many more arrows. Still has that equilibrium solution in the middle. And you can see that they don't cross. And in fact, that's a general fact. They cannot cross for any kind of reasonably behaved differential equation. And now that picture looks like just a fancier version. Huh. Well, actually a much better version. But um, this is do it yourself, so it's kind of nice. Anyway, that's a brief example of doing a slope field by hand. And the main thing we're trying to get across is the idea of a differential equation. That when I plug in x and y, I plug in those numbers and get this value, that's supposed to be a slope of a mystery curve that goes through that point. And just the green slope bits actually give me a pretty good idea of what's going on, and then I can put in the, the curves at least roughly by hand from that.